Some people thought Michigan would fall off in 2022, but this year's team might be better than last year's. They are anchored by superstar running back Blake Corum, who's arguably the top running back in college football. Currently, he's ranked number one in the country in touchdowns, is almost near the 1,000 yard mark, and is top 10 in terms of rushing yards. High school scouts were wrong on Corum coming out of high school. Yes, he was listed as a four-star recruit, but he was the 12th ranked running back in his class, and then in today's video, we're going to meet Corum and talk about the 11 running back recruits who are ranked in front of him, who they are, and where they are now. The video is pretty self-explanatory, but before we get started, be sure to subscribe as we're on the road to 100k, leave a like if you want to support today's video, turn on notifications, and let me know what player, topic, or series I should do next. Now, let's talk about the 11 running backs ranked higher than Blake Corum. Corum was a part of the class of 2020 and was ranked as a four-star player, the number 12 back, and the 129th best player overall in the class of 2020. Because he was only 5'8", that is likely the reason why he wasn't ranked as high, and maybe it's also because he's from the East Coast, which is known to get screwed over by scouts. But the guy in front of him was named Donald Chaney Jr. Coming out of Bell and Jesuit Prep in Miami, Chaney was a four-star recruit, the number 11 back, and the 114th best player in the class of 2020. At one point, Chaney was ranked as a top 40 player, but he slid by the end of it. He finished his high school career with 4,511 yards with 60 touchdowns. He played in the All-American Bowl and committed to Miami over the likes of Georgia, Florida, Notre Dame, LSU, Oklahoma, and Oregon. He had a lot of those big time offers and there was immediate hype for Chaney. As a true freshman, he'd run the ball 68 times for 322 yards and three touchdowns as he took more of a backup role. In 2021, he'd run the ball 11 times for 44 yards and a touchdown. Obviously, he got hurt as he would play in the first two games, but then would get hurt in their week three matchup against Michigan State and he was done for the season. Chaney's luck got no better, as right before the start of the 2022 season, he'd once again get hurt, and he has now pretty much missed two years because of injury. It's pretty much impossible to label Chaney as a bust because he hasn't been on the field, and this is a factor that is out of his control, but right now, based on that, there was no reason why Chaney should have been ranked higher than Corum. I hope the best for him moving forwards, and let's hope he gets healthy and can see the field in 2023. Funny enough, the next recruit actually played for Miami as well. His name was Jalen Knighton. Coming out of Deerfield Beach High School in Florida, Knighton was a star running back with breakaway speed who had tremendous stats. He got offers from a ton of big time programs, and while many thought he would commit to Ohio State, he eventually chose Willie Taggart in the Florida State Seminoles. After Taggart was fired though, Miami went after him really, really hard, and eventually they got him to flip. He would commit to the Canes, and he was ranked as the number 10 running back and the 106th best player in the class of 2020. Knighton would get a chance to see action in his first season. He'd play in nine games and actually started two of them. He ran the ball 52 times for 209 yards and a touchdown, and then in 2021, he'd have an opportunity to have an even bigger role. He'd run for 561 yards with eight touchdowns, but his 3.9 yards per carry was not great. He ended up starting the final six games of the 2021 season, and many expected him to be a big name this year. So far, Knighton's ran the ball 43 times for 163 yards without a touchdown. You can blame it on a couple of factors, but I think the biggest one is the additions of Henry Parrish Jr. and Thaddeus Franklin. Parrish was a transfer from Ole Miss, and he has nearly 500 yards and four touchdowns, and Franklin has five touchdowns on the ground. Knighton has become that third string running back, and while he's had a decent start to his career, there's no reason he should have been ranked higher than Corum, and we'll see if he can put it all together in 2023. The next guy we're to talk about is one of three Alabama running backs. His name is Roy Dell Williams, and he was the number nine running back, and the 77th best player in the class of 2020. Roydale hailed from Hueytown, Alabama, and had three straight 1,000-yard rushing seasons. He'd finished his career with nearly 6,000 yards and 92 total touchdowns, and was hampered by injuries his senior year. He wanted to stay in state, so it ultimately came down to Alabama and Auburn. Eventually, he'd pick the Crimson Tide, and Alabama got a future star. Unfortunately for Roydale, though, it hasn't been a great start to his season. Yes, there's been a log jam at the running back position, but in 2020, he'd run the ball 19 times for 71 yards and a touchdown. Last year, he'd have 284 yards and a touchdown, and so far this year, he has 147 yards and a touchdown. He's quietly been that third or fourth string back his entire career, and his injury his sophomore year did not help anything. With Jameer Gibbs likely headed off to the NFL next year, he will more than likely have a chance to play, but he's gonna have to fight off a couple of good freshmen, a couple of highly rated signees, and then Jace McClellan. 
We'll wait and see what happens. But for now, Roy Dell has been a little bit disappointing. The next guy we need to talk about is Jameer Gibbs. Coming out of Dalton High School, Gibbs was a four-star recruit and the number eight back in the class of 2020. He was a late rising player and after getting a ton of late offers, he decided to stay with Jeff Collins at Georgia Tech. Unfortunately for Gibbs, he would not win a lot of games, but he'd have a great career there. He ran for 460 yards and four touchdowns as a freshman, and then had 746 yards and four touchdowns as a sophomore. He also caught passes and touchdowns out of the backfield and was a return specialist. The guy was a highlight play waiting to happen, had blazing speed, and was an all-purpose All-American. That's why he decided to transfer to Alabama this past season, where you take over the starting job from Brian Robinson. So far this year, Gibbs has been one of the better receivers on the team and the top running back. He has 672 yards and six touchdowns and has 31 catches, 300 yards and three touchdowns for the year. He's been Bama's best weapon on offense, arguably, and Gibbs is playing himself into becoming a first round pick. He has 100% lived up to the hype, and some could argue he is more talented than Corum. I don't care what side you're on, but both Corum and Gibbs are superstars. The next player we have to talk about is Kendall Milton. Milton was a four-star recruit, the seventh best running back, and the 54th best player in the class of 2020, and at one point, he was ranked as a five-star. When I did all my research, I guess he had five stars at the time, but he ended up settling in that four-star range. Coming out of Buchanan High School in Clovis, California, Milton had unbelievable hype. He ran for 1,300 yards and 27 touchdowns as a junior, and then had 1,500 yards and 23 touchdowns as a senior. He was a highlight play waiting to happen, a first-team All-California player, and someone whose skills were surely going to translate to the next level. He ended up committing to Georgia over Alabama, LSU, and Ohio State, which you could argue are the four best schools at producing running backs. Milton would arrive at Georgia with a lot of hype, but there was a log jam at the running back position, so he'd have to wait a little bit to play. As a freshman, he'd run the ball for 193 yards without a touchdown, and then in 2021, he'd run for 264 yards and a touchdown, as they'd obviously win the national championship. This year, Milton has ran for 284 yards and four touchdowns, and is currently second on the team to Dejon Edwards. Right now, George is playing about three running backs at the position, and Milton is now struggling with a groin injury, so I think it's safe to say that he may not be the best back on the team right now, but he still has a lot of potential, and we'll see if he can put it all together in 2023. So far, Milton has neither been a bust nor a star. Up next, we have Jace McClellan. He was a four-star recruit, the number six running back, and the 47th best player in the class of 2020. McClellan was from Alito, Texas, and put up monster stats while he was there. He was projected to be a star at the next level, which is why he decided to go to Oklahoma. The Sooners were the local power, and it seemed like a ball and glove-like fit. Except McClellan had other ideas. On signing day, he would flip from the Sooners to Alabama, hoping to get a chance at being the Crimson Tide's premier running back. So far in his career, McClellan has actually showed that glimpse, but has not been able to put it all together. As a freshman, he ran for 245 yards and two touchdowns. As a sophomore, he ran for 191 yards and a touchdown before he got hurt. And then this year, he has 312 yards and three touchdowns. He's currently solidly the number two back behind Jameer Gibbs, and for a while was solidly the number two back behind Brian Robinson last year. Unfortunately, that injury he suffered as a sophomore did not help anything. And just like Milton, McClellan hasn't been bad, but he hasn't been great either. He's been a solid backup, but when you're signing a top 10 running back, you expect them to be a starter and a really good player. We'll see if McClellan can put it all together in 2023, but it seems like I'm currently saying that about a lot of different players from this class. Up next, we have to talk about Marshawn Lloyd. Lloyd was the number five back, the number 43 player, and a four-star recruit in the class of 2020. Coming out of the infamous Matha Catholic High School in Maryland, Lloyd was at one time ranked as a five-star recruit. He would fall a little bit towards the end, but he decided to do something different. He became the highest running back to ever commit to Will Muschamp and signed with South Carolina over Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, and Penn State. Unfortunately, Lloyd would not get a lot of time to play with Muschamp as he was fired after the 2020 season. So far, Lloyd has been good. He didn't play in 2020, and last year he'd run for over 200 yards and a touchdown. He was behind McDowell, Zaquandre White, and Kevin Harris, but this year, he has now taken over as the main guy. He is currently the top back for this year's Gamecocks, who have now caught fire and climbed back into the top 25. Lloyd has 526 yards with nine touchdowns. He has caught fire in his last few games, and Lloyd is quickly emerging as one of the better backs in the SEC. The jury is still out on his career so far, but if he finishes the season strong, I think he deserves to be ranked where he was coming out of high school. We have now entered the top four running backs in the country, and the first guy we're going to talk about is Tank Bigsby. He was ranked as the number four back and the 40th best player in the nation. 
Coming out of Callaway High School in Hogansville, Georgia, Bigsby was insane. As a junior, he ran for 2,221 yards and 22 touchdowns and became one of the top high school running backs in the country. He committed before his senior year and had offers from schools such as Georgia, LSU, and South Carolina. Bigsby had a big time senior season and would arrive at Auburn with a chance to play right away. He would show out in his first year. He became the Tigers top back in 2020 as he ran for 834 yards and five touchdowns. As a sophomore, he'd get even better as he rushed for 1,099 yards and 10 touchdowns. Through two years, Bigsby had become the guy and many were expecting a big 2022 season. Unfortunately for him though, he's only ran for 524 yards and six touchdowns, which is a little bit disappointing compared to the hype, but at the same time, Auburn is a complete dumpster fire. I think Bigsby could leave for the NFL after this season, but I don't know if he'd go in the first three rounds. He might be better off coming back for his senior campaign, but in terms of his grade coming out of high school, I think Bigsby has clearly lived up to the hype and deserves to be ranked where he is. He's still not as good as Corum though. It seems like every class has one of those players that is a big time bust and just can't seem to figure it out. And I think Demarcus Bowman is in that category. Coming out of Lakeland High School, Bowman was a five-star recruit, the number three back and the 20th best player in the country. He would finish his Lakeland career with 5,081 yards and 70 touchdowns. He had video game-like numbers, and he actually used the NCAA 14 video game to commit. It was footage from the series Road to Glory, and he used that to commit to Clemson. Clemson was super excited to be getting another five-star back, but Bowman would not really get much of a chance to play. He'd run the ball nine times for 32 yards before he would decide to transfer home to Florida in 2021. He would join a loaded running back room and would not get an opportunity to play. He ran the ball 14 times for 81 yards and had failed to score a touchdown through two years. This summer, Bowman would once again enter the transfer portal and decided to commit to UCF. This is actually really unfortunate as six different running backs have seen the field for UCF, but Bowman is not one of them. I'm not gonna speculate and I have no idea what is actually going on, but I'm sure there's a reason why he is not playing and I really hope he gets to see the field because this guy was awesome coming out of high school and deserves a chance to play. I'm not sure if UCF is the place for him, but we should all be rooting for Bowman. But right now, he has not lived up to his five-star status coming out of high school, but there is still time to save that. The number two running back in the class of 2020 was Zachary Evans. Coming out of North Shore High School in Houston, Evans had one of the most wild careers ever. He put up insane numbers and also had an insane recruiting story. It seemed he flipped around between three or four schools, and I actually made a video about the entire process if you want to learn about it, but it was just absolutely nuts. He eventually settled on TCU, becoming the highest rated running back to ever sign with the Horned Frogs. Evans had a ton of hype and would actually have a great freshman year. He'd run for 415 yards and four touchdowns, and then in 2021, he'd run for 648 yards and five touchdowns. Unfortunately, he got hurt, so he couldn't finish the year, but after the season, he decided to transfer to Ole Miss. He probably thought he was guaranteed the starting gig, but so far, a true freshman has beaten him out. This has not stopped Evans from having a good year and building upon his NFL draft portfolio though. He's ran the ball 100 times for 605 yards and 7 touchdowns, and while Ole Miss has finally lost, the Rebels are still a really good team, and the one-two punch of Quinshaw Judkins and Zach Evans is one of the best in the nation. I definitely think he's going to leave for the NFL after this season, and he could be a guy who plays for a while in the NFL. He hasn't had one of those groundbreaking seasons quite yet, but Evans I think has lived up to the hype for the most part coming out of high school, as he has been solid, scored touchdowns, and is likely going to finish with over a thousand yards this year. Now we head into our final player, and that is Bijan Robinson. Coming out of South Point Catholic High School in Tucson, Arizona, Robinson was the number one running back and the 15th best player in the class of 2020. He decided to commit to Texas, and this was a huge get for Tom Herman. In 2020, Robinson would run the ball for 703 yards and four touchdowns, and then in 2021, he'd have his breakout season. He ran for 1,127 yards and 11 touchdowns, and would miss time due to injury. He was seen as a dark horse Heisman contender and had a lot of memorable plays last year. So far this year, Robinson has continued where he left off. He's ran for 920 yards and 11 touchdowns, and he's still got a couple games to go. Robinson could become an All-American and at minimum an All-Big 12 player, and is likely going to hear his name called in the first round. He's definitely lived up to his height coming out of high school, and you could argue deserved to be ranked higher than Corum. 
So out of all these guys, the players who have lived up to the hype are B. John Robinson, Zach Evans, Tank Bigsby, Marshawn Lloyd, and Jameer Gibbs. Don Chaney, Jalen Knighton, Roy Dell Williams, Kendall Milton, Jace McClellan, and Demarcus Bowman all could be a lot better and all deserve to be ranked lower than Corum. Honestly, at this point, I would put Corum at number two between Bijan and Gibbs. Overall, I'm really excited to see what the future holds for Blake Corum, and while he does have an uphill battle becoming a star in the NFL, he's proven people wrong time and time again, and I'm really excited to see how he finishes the year. But what do you guys think? Who is the best running back in college football? What are your thoughts on the players from this year's class? And what player, topic, team, situation, or series should I cover next? I hope you guys enjoyed this style of video, and if you did, be sure to leave a like and a comment so I can do more of these. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe and check out all of the videos on the end screen, including the 16 recruits ranked higher than Will Anderson. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.